Hi there, and welcome to another episode of 411 Pop Culture, where real people talk about really everything. I'm your host, Justin Steele, and with me is Danielle Almendra, and we are going to talk about All That Glitters and Hidden Jewel tonight. We just finished watching All That Glitters, so uh, you're going to get a very honest, direct reaction. But overall, I loved it. I thought yeah. it was great. Spoiler, spoiler, spoilers, everybody. Just beware. Uh, we assume you're VC Andrews fans. If not, you know, I might not watch this just yet. Uh, but anyway, we just, we've been getting a lot of good feedback from various viewers. I know that you started getting a dialogue with Candy, mm -hmm. and uh, me too, and uh, we just, we really enjoy it. So thanks for everybody for commenting. I do want to say right off the bat, because I forgot to mention in the last episode, Mrs. Claiborne was played by the woman, the actress who played Madame Marisha in mm -hmm. If There Be Thorns. So I remember being like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm excited that's going to be a thing. And so um, we, I wanted to remember to say that. And then I didn't need a reminder because then all of a sudden we have right. like a buffet of V.C. Andrews actresses and actors. Right. Like uh, Jean was played by Vera from My Sweet Audrina. Mm -hmm. Octavius was played by the Reverend from yep. the Heaven Lifetime adaptation. So it was cool to kind of get to see um, this sort of like community family again. But again, Danielle, what did you, uh, what were your initial impressions of uh, All I That really Glitters? I loved it. I want to say I just finished reading All That Glitters again. So to see it on screen again almost exactly how the book really goes yeah. I, I think the timing went really well houses looked great you know how I'm about very the houses. true though. very true um everything that i kind of pictured in my mind was there um, i will say that i did have a stronger reaction to paul while watching the adaptation versus in the book mm, for sure i guess you, you know he's in pain you know he loves ruby you know it's heartbreaking for him to, but he, the actor did a really great job and I, my heart just went out to him. And just seeing, like, those awkward moments when he was with Ruby and Bo would be in the room. Yeah, and I was sure. just like, I feel so bad for him. It's true. Uh -huh. I mean, like, you know, we watched this with our friend Gina, and she had a reaction, too, of, like, well, they had an agreement. And in the book, you know, Paul doesn't try and really make guilt, yeah. like make Ruby feel guilty. I lo That's one of the things I really did like about the adaptation. I feel like, it, like you said, it's super close. A lot yeah. of things, although I know you and our, our Candy were talking yeah. about, like, Bo versus what you guys all thought. And didn't you say that you thought even more, like before you thought you would kind of forgive a lot of things with Bo, but you feel like even less so now that he looks like Bo? Yeah, I mean, well, so for me, when I first saw Bo, I'm like, that's not the picture I had in my head. Right. In the Ruby adaptation. And then he and I kind of talked about it, and I was like, okay, I kind of came around a little bit. Pearl in the Mist, I was like, okay. But I think he still looks like a boy to me now. For and sure. I, in all that glitters, I picture him as this strong man, you know, that Ruby's depending on. And I'm like, he still looks like a little kid. No, see, and I thought he even looked more like Bo. I remember thinking, like, oh, okay. And he got. will agree with me. That's what I'm saying. He was candy kind of. But I was like, oh, you know what? Now they'll finally realize. They'll be okay with it. But then you told me that, like, you're like, oh, it's even less. I'm like, oh, wow, I yeah, think he looks great, no. though. But anyway, going back to Paul, yeah. I do feel like that was one of the things I did like about this. I think, like, you know, Dollinganger, I love Heaven, all of them. Dollinganger's my favorite. You love all of them. Heaven, Castiles, those yeah. are your favorites. But I feel like somebody that's watching the, La La the Landry series, mm -hmm. I will say it right this time, another fun V.C. Andrews thing. We all have our own right. ways of saying things. I think that um, somebody that really loves the Landry series, I'm sure there's going to be problems. There's going to be things. I, you know, I've read it quite a few times now. I get the differences. That being said, as far as the Lifetime adaptations go, this one was... These ones have been like really great. Yeah, like ninety percent of the story, yes. ninety percent of what's there. No is major changes. Correct. And the ones that they really needed to do um, to fit it into a lifetime budget, sure. probably like when they found Paul's body. Obviously, she took them through the body. Right. Obviously, they couldn't do that for a the, lifetime. The huge, but it still oh, worked. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but it still worked. So that's why, like, agreed. You know, the costumes, even actually, and I was surprised knowing that it's a lifetime budget. Like the houses really did look rich. Like I think they so really too, did yeah. a great job with Paul's house. Um, well, what I what I wanted good, to say yeah. though about that was that Paul, the whole Paul thing, yeah. was you know they had to make some changes, and I feel like one yeah. of the big changes they made with Ruby was making her a stronger character. Yeah. I enjoyed that sort of twist to it, and so when like Paul kind of made her feel guilty, I kind of like that little a a addition to it. At first, I was kind of like, well, no, you made an agreement, and yeah. in the book, Paul was pretty much like, no, we made this yeah. agreement, but he kind of started to beg Ruby. And I was wondering how yeah. far they were going to go with the Paul Ruby storyline, especially with like the the Civil War yeah. fantasy thing. I'm glad they added that in there. I'm really glad they added in it. I was worried when reading it. I, and it's funny yeah. when you're reading things like that, you almost are less cringeworthy. But I was 
the, every time I read it in the book, I'm always a little cringy. Seeing it on film, yeah. though, I, I thought I was going to be like, oh, it's going to be too much. I'm like, oh, no, it's kind of no, sweet. sweet. Yes! I actually really liked yes! it. And so I'm glad they kept that stuff and in. I'm glad that you mentioned that because it, yeah. Paul's role in the book is is cringeworthy yes yes and but when i saw it on film i just i like almost forgot that they were half brother and half sister and yeah. like, he loves this woman interestingly this enough and it's going to be i think a heavier part in hidden jewel the plot line with ruby um but in it's interesting because vc andrews never really took a stance on incest yeah. the brother but like it did become like you know kathy and christopher were going to be together yeah. or mm -hmm. heaven and troy yeah i feel like ruby's kind of the one series where it is almost sort of like a commentary on maybe incest isn't good right like because it's going to sort of be like because paul was like this he was so messed up like ruby always would feel guilty about it yeah. or this or that and even when like kathy or something felt guilty she still went with her instincts like kathy would have been sleeping with paul like all the time <laughs> right. and whereas ruby's kind of like i can't cute. do that i think so too <laughs> like they, they kind of are just like whatever we feel what we feel ruby definitely has a lot of guilt about it she thinks all the evil in her life is from this etc so i kind of it's kind of an interesting and other take yeah. you know i think we we do love paul and we want happiness for him. And I think that the actor, like you were saying, really made you feel for him. You felt mm. compassion. But again, I really loved the big thing, I think, that for all that glitters, what happens in all that glitters, is the switch. The yes. sort of twin switch. Which, and, when well, I started reading, okay. I was like, what? For I, don't, sure. I just completely forgot I thought, about see, it. It's one of my favorite things about it. Like, oh, I love that part. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. But see, actually, I, loved, I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, and I thought, like, I was saying to, to you and Gina, I felt like... Even though they're identical twins, the actresses, the Bano sisters, mm -hmm. I never, I really was worried about how they were going to pull yeah. it off. I'm like, okay, but they look different and like more different, different than enough, alike. Yeah. And I'm like, how is anybody going to believe this? But I literally was sitting there and I'm like, is that, is that the Giselle actress playing this? So that I'm like, because it just, the, the actress Ruby, yeah. she was like so good. Yeah. And she really did look like Giselle. And so much so that I was having fun with it. Yeah, but I was, I, was I literally had to great. be like, wait, that can't be the same actress that was playing Ruby yeah. because it's such, it was such a change. And I really liked that. That's definitely a change from the book. A good change, in my opinion, that they're making Ruby a stronger character and that she might not be all good. Like, she's so, yeah. like, perfect in the books that yeah. I love that, like, she kind of embraced being Giselle. And in the book, yeah. she realizes, like, okay, Giselle, living your life, I know why you are the way you are. I love that that still happened in this, but it also was a little bit further where she's like, I know why you are the way you are, and you know what? I might kind of be like that now, yeah. too. And I'm kind of cool with that. And I'm kind of cool with that. Like, I thought it was neat. I was mm, about it. Mm. Oh, I think it's I think it's more of a human thing. Yeah. Because how many times, like she said, Ruby's like, well, I always need to be rescued. I feel like I'm always, like, lost. And you at least always, you didn't get committed, you know, you have commitments emotionally. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think it's better that we have emotional attachments in our life. Yeah. But there, I get the, the inclination to cut yourself off emotionally mm -hmm. so you don't keep getting hurt. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Ruby was saying. But anyway i just i really love the adaptation for the the twins the sister dynamic i, I think giselle the actress was really good too the sort of like mm -hmm. you can really see why she is so jealous so hurt everything she does is because of that and i really thought the vc or andrew niederman the ghostwriter he did a good job with giselle and then lifetime made her real yeah. like i i did think that when i was watching the adaptation I still found it weird that Giselle was going to keep the Paul secret um, with Paul and Ruby being married because it's such an un giselle like thing to do i don't think so i think giselle really does love her sister it's all the like what we we're talking about before she was an only child all of a sudden she has a sibling a look-alike sibling yeah. she's lost her external identity and so but i think she's like in the end she really does love ruby she really would like to be her family but she has to like she doesn't know how else to do but reject her yeah. But anyway, I, I just, I get, though, why you're saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I so with the addition of, like, Paul and making her feel guilty, I just thought it made an interesting dynamic. Yeah. But what did you think about, like, Gladys and Octavius as characters? Because I always think Gladys is almost the true villain. Yeah. Like, she's willing to do some effed up stuff to yeah. Ruby because of Gabrielle, but it's really her husband that did this. Yeah. I, I mean, I enjoyed the character. She was who she was. 
I mean, the other thing you have to think of is that when she sees Ruby, it reminds her of Gabrielle. Absolutely. I mean, so she definitely takes her vengeance out on Ruby. Yeah. Um, for what Octavius did, for sure. My only thing was that I wish that they had introduced maybe Gladys and Octavius sooner. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, I the idea that, like, Gladys would really, because of what she did to Gabrielle, because of what she's yeah. doing now to Ruby, and Ruby just wants to be with Bo, which is an interesting dynamic because I love Bo, but, he, you know, in the books he's such, like, a cowardly yes. type of person, like, being with Giselle mm -hmm. and all that. But, like, it is her true love. So I'm like I'm glad that they again they made Ruby more realistic and Bo wasn't such a like whimpery character like he he they really set it up maybe it's kind of a cheat but they set it up that he did not know about yeah. Pearl he did not know all this was going on and Giselle was really like in Ruby's ear in yeah. Paul's ear in Bo's ear being like yeah. No, Love it's gone. Da, da, da. <laughs> but yeah, so what did you think about like when Bo and Giselle were together and do you think that Bo is Ruby's true love? I definitely think Bo is Ruby's true mm -hmm. love, obviously. Just their connection from the beginning and their dynamics. So that's there's no question there for sure. I will say though, I had such a strong reaction to him being with Giselle, especially in the book when he knows about Pearl. Um, so the adaptation did spin that pretty well, like he didn't really know. But then I like how they did actually go back and explain like why he was with Giselle. Like if I can't have you, like right. then I have Giselle at least. And she was different in Paris, so he was right. still getting some of that Ruby-ish stuff from her so that kind of made more sense but in the adaptations like they wait a little bit to explain it mm -hmm. you're kind of like what are you right. doing right. like why are you with her because you don't see the good Giselle that he was talking about they don't even really reference it I do later. wish we had seen a little bit of that in the movie too because yeah. Giselle was pretty awful to Bo but I think it was an interesting setup because Ruby as Giselle, and I loved all the scenes. Yes. I can't emphasize it again. One, I, I was too. shocked how much I was like, wow, she really like, yeah, does look her. like her and He's sound like, like her. <laughs> but also the fact, like, I liked the little moment, too, where she was even kind of awful to Bo. Yeah. Which is what Giselle was doing. She was yeah. saying earlier on, like, you're so stupid, you yeah. can't do anything. And or Big Ruby, Roy Paul or something correct, like that. Correct, and yeah. Ruby would never say that, and she did in this movie. And I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Like, like because Ruby in this, they kind of went a little bit on that route of Ruby as Giselle actually liking being Giselle, whereas in the book she's like, no, yeah. I, I can't be bad, I hate yeah. it. I like that she's kind of like, you know what, I kind of like being bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to forget too, because I know you had a reaction about Louie, missing yes. Louie. So I, I always, and I was just thinking this, I swear to you, when I was reading Pearl, on the, Pearl in the Mist, I was like, oh, we never see Abby again, and I wonder what would happen to her. And I'm so excited that we got Abby back. But I don't know how I feel at the cost of Louie because that was such a big deal. And I have to wonder, you know, uh, somebody did make in the comments below. I'll try and put a little uh, credit for you because I'm not thinking of your name off the top of my head. Um, and I, we've had so many technical difficulties right now. I can't tell you how many. I can't <laughs> stop the filming again. <laughs> I don't have it in me to stop the filming again and go again. Long story short, he had said that COVID really affected the production. So I do have to wonder if maybe yeah. the actor or something couldn't come back, Louis. But I love that they brought Abby back. I mean, it wasn't like life changing or anything. I had a reaction, but I'm glad I got to yeah. see her because I've always, I swear, I just read Pearl in the Mist and I was like, he did. We never saw Abby again. So when she was here, I was like, <gasps> excited. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I did have a reaction to it, but yeah. it did work. It was I thought still so, able so. to work. It could so have been it, either one of them. Yes, you know, I didn't mind it. Terribly, but I was just like, oh, but I really wanted to see Louie. But you're right, the whole COVID thing. And I like how yeah. you, you did say one of our viewers said that Tarnished Same Gold guy. was the He's yeah. the one who told me Tarnished Thank Gold. Thank you for yeah. that information because I was yeah. like, maybe they'll make it later. Maybe, maybe yeah. You guys, we might still get it. You never know. Fingers crossed. I hope. Yeah. I mean, it, it's what it, why it's an interesting story because we already know, unlike like Garden of Shadows where there's a big reveal yeah. or even like Web of Dreams that kind of clears things up, I feel like the story of uh, Gabrielle is, we already know it 100%, but it's still interesting to see how she, he, like, because if you think about it, how does she get from this point to this point yeah. to this point? And it does really show you, especially once you know Gladys and the character mm -hmm. of Gladys. But yeah, so what else? I loved it. 
I liked, um, obviously we had some issues with Bo and this one for me. I we, didn't. We I thought fine. he was even better, so I, I was surprised that you guys were having this Giselle reaction. I enjoyed Giselle much yeah. more in this adaptation yeah. um, for all that glitters. I love the switch in this way more than I did in the book. I thought, that, yeah, I thought it was, I love the switch in the book and I loved <laughs> it even more. And I just felt again like what I felt with part with Ruby, with Pearl in the Mist, and now with this one too. I feel like there's a nice flow to it. I feel like it feels like we're watching a Lifetime movie mm. or even a film, whereas the other ones are, it's almost like the highlights of Flowers in the Attic or the highlights of Petals on the Wind where you're like, bam, Julian's this, bam, she's here, bam, this. Yeah. Whereas this, I feel like there's a nice yes. flow. Like they have, they take a moment to show you, they have time to show you yeah. like New Orleans and stuff. I, again, everything though, they really did include everything yeah. from the, the little secret hideaway mm -hmm. they had, Bo and Ruby. Yeah, and the, like when he dresses up as the Colonel. Paul and, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad they had that in there. Yeah, again, I, it made me cringe when I read it, but I actually thought it worked on screen. I was like, oh, okay, good. But we are really looking forward to watching Hidden Jewel tomorrow night. I was surprised that they're going to use the yes. same actors. Now, I will I'm say I can it. see that being a problem for this. <laughs> I have such mixed, like 100% down the line mixed. I 100% think that there will be a more of an emotional connection to have our Ruby now and our Bo to like sort of keep the story going. But they are going to look so young yes. compared to uh, this Pearl who... No, it, this might be the one VC Andrews ish thing that we all get upset about. I would, I have less connection to the Landry series about certain things looking a certain way. I still do, but not as much as like mm -hmm. with Flowers in the Attic, etc., or Heaven, Dark Hair, and Dark Angel. But uh, this Pearl has like this red hair, yeah. and I'm just curious because they went out of their way to almost establish her as a blonde in the movie, yeah. and obviously on the cover of Hidden Jewel she has blonde hair. I would I I don't know why, but then they chose to give this like really red haired girl, maybe because of Ruby the red hair thing. But again, I don't I, I whatever. Lifetime will have to explain it. I mean, yeah. they keep messing the hair up at one point. Right. We, we almost I mean, had them all. We almost I mean, had them all. Is this girl this Meryl Streep? I don't know. Like I can understand if you were like for a very known actress. No offense to oh, her or anything. It's just a VC Andrews thing that we get so tense about these things. But I am very much looking forward to Hidden Jewel yeah. tomorrow. I think it's going to be really good. A nice I solid. I, I feel like the yeah. Landry series was the maybe the best of the adaptation I'm, I'm so far. I'm curious to see how they're going to age them. I, I just yeah. think it's going to be really weird. And we have to remember, maybe they did plan on changing them out, but because of COVID, maybe, yeah. they didn't. Yeah. So, so we'll see. So we We're ready it. to go see. Well, yeah, but we definitely enjoyed all that glitters. As much as I've come around to really loving my sweet Audrina, and you know what? I'm not going to lie. I've gone back now and watched the Heaven series a couple times. I've definitely watched Flowers Attic a couple times. Now, the 87 movie will always be my favorite of the of adaptations, but I've really started to embrace these more. That being said, the Landry series... As far as an adaptation goes, and we know it's such a thing when you're adapting book to film, you can't have everything. I feel like this series has had 90% of everything that's yeah. in the book. And not only that, they made a film out of it. Because yeah. it's not, you can't always have literal interpretations that can be problematic for screen. Mm -hmm. I think it's working, and yeah. I think it's done. Because again, I think that the ghostwriter wrote the Landry series under the thing of like, well, why haven't any of my V.C. Andrews books been adapted to film? So I think he made this more of a visual story. Well, he was a consultant, stories. so maybe he he'll was, watch he this saw, yeah, so. and he'll comment. <laughs> right, but uh, all right. Well, thanks for watching, and Hidden Jewel, our review is coming up next. All right, well, we are just finished watching Hidden Jewel, so we're continuing on. I liked it a lot. I thought there was a lot of good stuff to it. There's a lot of problems to it, a lot of deviations. I think a big one for you right off the bat was, and for me too, was Jack being called John, who I think, like, it starts off in the novel. He's, like, introduced himself as John, and but everybody calls me Jack sort of thing. Again, I could be wrong, but I think that's kind of what happens. And I will say that I feel like Hidden Jewel as a novel is sort of, like, I feel like the ghostwriter kind of rushed through it. We noticed a grammatical error where one scene, Pearl, in the novel is introducing herself. I think it's in the scene where she meets Jack, John, whoever he is now. Please call me uh, Ruby. Correct, yeah. She's like, please yeah. call me Ruby. And he's like, Ruby, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, am I reading this wrong? Am I doing something? Because I just, I did reread it about a week ago, and you kind of finished rereading it today. Yeah. And I think you're having more of a typical V.C. Andrews fan who really just read a novel reaction because you remember a lot more of the details. Yeah. And I think, like, yes, I agree 
but I was able, I was willing to let a few things go. That one definitely kind of bothered More me. More so than I thought you would. Yeah, I mean, well, it's a name. <laughs> a name is a pretty big deal. And I think, though, like, I, I just, I feel like it was, like, his first draft. Like, and I feel like here <laughs> they tried to make it... Um, they try to take the things that were wrong and make it a little bit more smooth. Again, you have to remember these are gothic novels, and I feel like Hidden Jewel really went into that with the whole voodoo yeah. aspect of it. I will say, I didn't think too much of it because I think the things we remember from the Landry series are Ruby meeting Giselle, Bo, Paul, mm -hmm. Cypress Woods. But I, I think that there is a prominent, it's not like the main focus, there's no main story, but I think voodoo is a big part of the story, like where she's always wearing her dime little bracelet. Obviously, that's why I said I wish in the original Ruby adaptation last week that they had focused a little bit more on the Bayou and Graham Mirror because it has such a big part in Hidden yeah. Jewel. So people that might not have only maybe just watched the film mm -hmm. adaptation they might think that, whoa, what is all this voodoo coming out of nowhere? Like, again, they kind of did it in the first movie with the whole Mama Didi and Nina. But I also think, like, because that was it, Pearl in the Mist, you don't really hear about it again. Right. We did see at the end of All That Glitters, they sort of gave that ominous tone with Pearl as a little girl looking in the voodoo stuff that yeah. that might happen. But I feel like this might be a, might have been a lot for people. Like, whoa, yeah. where is all this coming from? It was a lot from? for me. Yeah, rereading the novel. You were kind of you had a reaction to it. Where yeah. You're like, what is all this? Da, 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 da. Yeah, we had a little bit of a debate going while we were watching it. And I'm like, even when I read, because I just reread it, I finished it today, and I was like, I just didn't think the voodoo stuff was like such a predominant, yeah, um, part of the books. It was definitely mentioned, and it For was sure. important, but to me, it was not as much as this one. Yeah, I think a lot of it had to do, too, with, like, when they would... Because they didn't get rid of the servants in All That Glitters. Yeah. She just was mean to them as Giselle. But, like, in the in All That Glitters, she hires new servants. The one woman's like, oh, you know, she's clearly voodoo. Also at Cypress Hill, yep. whoever... Uh, Ruby kind of hired. She was like, I won't work in any house where I can't... Cypress Woods. Cypress yep. Woods, sorry. It's been a long time. Yeah, <laughs> it has been. Uh, but Cypress Woods, this yeah, maid wasn't even yeah. going to work there. She couldn't do it. So it was always something that was going on in the novels. And so when you get to Hidden Jewel and we see this adaptation where it's so much... Yeah. I do want to first and foremost say, though, I did enjoy the yes. actress who played Pearl. I think we left the last part, the first part of this episode you're watching... We kind of talked about, like, why the red hair. I was willing to forgive it. I thought she really got it. I always thought the character of Pearl was really interesting, too, because it is sort of full circle back to she's a healer like yeah. Grand Mere, mm -hmm. Grand Mere Catherine, but she's also a modern healer, which is a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I, I really liked that. And I, I just I thought this actress really got that that's who this Pearl was. And I really enjoyed her performance. Um, but what did you think overall, Danielle, about, like, the overall, just well, what did you think? I mean, a quick comment, too, is that it makes sense that she'd want to be a doctor because she didn't grow up in the bayou. Absolutely. So I think yeah. that's one part of it which makes sense, but she does have that background. And it's interesting that she wants to go back to the yes, bayou as a doctor. You know, yeah. yeah. I will say I really enjoyed it. I had very strong reactions to a lot you of did. it. You did. You really that did. That he didn't really. Yeah. He was like, well, that's not a big deal. Well, that's not a big deal. But I felt like the Pierre thing was kind of rushed and a little bit awkward um, compared to the novel. But... In what you're saying is it works. They yeah. were filming in the middle of COVID, too. That's also something to remember. Right. And that um, may have changed some things. The names thing really bothered me. The, names, the name the for Jack, John the Jack bothered yeah. me. And I, then Pearl I don't Dumont get that. was driving yeah, me crazy. I, let's, yes. let's make sure people, did you hear that out there when you're watching it? Where <laughs> I didn't pick up at first, but you and you and yeah. Gina did, where you're like, wait, Pearl Dumont. Because of all the, all the sort of incarnations of what he would know Pearl as. I feel like Pearl Dumas would be the, the last, last one. one right. it, I could see Pearl Landry. He's like, oh, mm -hmm. the Landrys here are famous. Yep. Or the Tates here are famous. So Pearl Tate. And her actual name, Pearl Andreas. Right. Why Pearl Dumas did he come up with? I get, you know, where Dumas came from, but like, it just didn't yeah, make sense to me. Yeah, it was just weird. It, that really bugged yeah, me. Yeah, it was, it was, it was annoying. bothered me. It was strange um, that, that just that they kept on that. The, uh, the identical names. twins thing bothered me. Oh, I, about Pierre and Jean. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they were supposed to be, like, identical, just like yeah. Ruby and Giselle. Right. And they were not They were both adorable, and they were sure, great. Sure. Absolutely. And did a good job yes, in their parts. But absolutely. I but it. I was just, that kind of bothered me a little bit. And I hate to criticize, because I did enjoy it. Yeah. I want you guys to know, like, 
what they had to change and after we discussed it it worked i mean there were some slight changes that had to be made based on the lifetime adaptation especially with the dr yeah. buster uh tr treha tra whatever they mm -hmm. say um which i really loved that scene yeah though. like we yeah we were talking about how we love in the novel like the whole setup for it i feel like pearl is the closest to really buster getting his way yeah. and it's awful but i love that like you know, when you're reading the novel, she had left a note for Jack, mm -hmm. and you're kind of thinking, like, oh, okay, he's going to come in and save her. But she really does save herself yep. in the novel, and then he comes in and helps at the last minute, but she gets away from Buster. She yep. defeats him. And I like that they retained that, as well as one of my favorite things about Pearl in that scene is the knife, when she's sort of, like, the anxiety about grabbing yeah. it, but then her threat is very, like, I feel like a self-preservation. Like, she goes back to facts, like... If I stab you across the jugular with mm -hmm. this, you know, I, I loved that they sort of, they at least kept yeah. that and the, the energy of it was mm -hmm. the exact right. Um, and I think that, agree with you. I think yeah. there was a lot to enjoy with it. There's definitely stuff that we can nitpick about and that it should be nitpicked about. But uh, even despite like her hair, I really liked Pearl. Yeah. I thought that, I, I know that you guys were really worried about the aging Again, they're supposed to be about 36. I don't know if I would believe that the Bo and Ruby, the actor and actress, were 36. But I could buy that they aged them enough yeah. that they... I, I believe it. Didn't it didn't take away no. from it. And I think yeah. that, like, it would have been really hard to see a recast Ruby, an older actress, doing all the stuff. Because I think we really would have been jerked out of seeing now the, yeah. uh, the huge amount of uh, mystical mm -hmm. voodoo stuff. But I do want to say that that stuff is important to V.C. Andrews. These are gothic novels. Yeah. I think we get swept up in the sort of romance or the forbidden romances, etc. But, like, they are gothic novels, or they're supposed to be. And that's one of the neat things I always thought about Ruby from the Ghost Rider was that he took it to the bayou, yeah. to New Orleans, and sort of created this, like, interesting setting for these for these yeah. events to take place. As you said, romance, though. I As I was rereading the novel, I really enjoyed the Jack and Pearl uh, yeah, romance. I sure. love how it came through. I think they did a great job portraying their chemistry on Absolutely. In the adaptation. Yeah. Playful, I, but yes. also caring and considerate. Mm -hmm. I believed it. I yeah. really enjoyed yeah. it. Um, and I and actually, I really want to comment on the end because I remember after I finished the novel today, I was like, I want more. Like I didn't. I'm a very big on closure, and I know yeah. this was like the last one, really. And I was like, but that's it? Like, oh, we're dating, and that's fine. <laughs> um, but I really liked on the adaptation how they... Um they said, "Oh, you're gonna yeah. fix this up to come live here." And well, they talk about it yes. vaguely in the like in the future. We'll do this. It's nice that they yeah. showed you a little bit of that future. I like that. Yeah. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that change. Yeah. And I, you know, I did have a lot of problems with some of the changes, but I definitely enjoyed that one. Yeah, I think like I, I think Bo did a great job this time through. Ruby, mm -hmm. again, little little picky things, but the overall, Bo, I thought you did want to comment on um, Bo, how they tried to make him a little better. Oh, yeah. yeah, just if just from Bo from the books, from Bo to the movies. And another example of them trying to make him better is how his fall in this yeah. adaptation was a, a complete accident. Yeah. One of those things, whereas in the novel, he was drinking, getting drunk, and being completely worthless, you yeah. know, to, to helping right. anybody. So his line of, like... I'm just I'm just not helping anybody. I can't do anything. Makes more sense in the novel. It makes sense too yeah. if you are like trying to be a good guy and these things keep happening to you. But overall too, I think from a cinematic point of view, the story of Ruby, you want her to end up with if all yeah. the crappy things that happened to her, you want her to end up with a decent guy. Yeah. And so they had to make Bo a little bit more of a decent guy. I I don't know how I'll feel down the road, but I've had enough times in life like it's always like in the late 90s, early 2000s, it became a thing in pop culture to, like, okay, we can't always have the happy ending. Sometimes we, we have to, don't sell out and just give the happy ending. But I think enough time has passed in pop culture. It's 2021. Sometimes I want a happy ending. So with Bo, you know, overall, I, I'm glad that they made the change to make him just a little bit of a yeah. better guy. Overall, though, I really enjoyed the series. Yeah. I will probably go back to watch this. I'm looking forward to when it comes out on DVD. I do wish that maybe in Pearl in the Mist and all that glitters, they had inserted a little bit more of Ruby's yeah. sort of super uh, superstitional behavior. But they, you know, did kind of omit it because you want to focus on Giselle and all that. But overall, I, I'm pleased with the experience. Yeah, I mean, I think we both agreed that out of all the adaptations, this one, because of the time frame, yeah. it really worked 
yeah. you didn't feel like they were too slow. You didn't feel like they were too fast. I thought they it were a nice feel, flow. Yeah, absolutely. it didn't feel choppy. Casting was great, mostly. But overall, yeah, I would say I really enjoyed it. I am going to go back and even reread Tarnished Gold, even though yeah. we don't have the fifth movie. Maybe they'll eventually make it. You know, who knows? Fingers crossed. I am going to go back and reread that as well. But overall, we really enjoyed it. Um, it was a great experience. I'm hoping they'll do Dawn. I'm hoping oh, that'll yeah, be the next yeah. The Cutler series. I know Melody is still a series they could do. Yeah. I mean, they had, they did Rain back in like 1999, 2000. They never mm -hmm. followed up with any sequels to it. I think that they... They made some changes. I think there's going to be resistance to it, but this was the closest to the novels as far as a Lifetime adaptation yeah. goes. And I, I, I would there's we more had, that I liked about it than I did. Yeah, didn't. we had so. the less complaints about this yeah. one, I think, than we did with the the Castile and the Dollinganger series. I absolutely enjoyed it. I love going back and rereading the novels now yeah. um, in my 30s. We won't get a little bit of a different perspective well, specific numbers but in my 30s getting a different perspective i still really relate i really was surprised that i related so much to pearl and jack's relationship i it did I, take I, me I back enjoyed it, it took me back it made you feel young again yes, in a it way. Did. yeah mm -hmm. i agree with that yeah. and i thought that they like i said i thought they did a really great job yeah, together I, was great pearl was great yeah definitely how i picture obviously the hair thing that didn't bother me like we talked once, about once earlier. i realized that at least she got the role 100 yes. percent Again, with, mm -hmm. like, the heaven thing, I, I never quite felt she was heaven, and plus it was the hair color with Pearl, knowing she it's the daughter story, which is only usually ever just one yeah. story. I'm kind of like, okay, yeah. I, can, I can let go of it for this, especially if she's going to get it. Like, it's like Annie. I didn't worry about right. Annie's hair color because it's just that one story. Well, and I will say, too, when I reread the novel, they don't really focus on her blonde hair. It's right. never, like, a big correct, thing. Correct, correct. Whereas, like, with Heaven, it's the hair. With Kathy, mm -hmm. it's the blonde hair. But with Ruby, it was the red hair. But with Pearl, they didn't really talk about... Oh, her beautiful right. blonde hair. Her thing so was more about being a doctor. doctor correct. And, I, you know, with the relationship with Claude at the beginning, yeah. what a douche he turned and out to be. her emotions and stuff Yeah, like and that. Learning, learning to find that, like, she's so in her brain yeah. and all this, like, learning to find her emotional self. I, w I did make a comment earlier, too, that, like, with the story of Pearl... You know, it's. I want stories out there for young women who can be inspired by doctors yes. and young women. That being said, when I was 13, when you're reading a V.C. Andrews novel, right. you do want her to get right to the, <laughs> the, romance, the romance and right. all that. But with this adaptation, I loved the dialogue because she was smart. She yeah. was intelligent. You could tell that she wanted to be a doctor, and it didn't, it didn't make you wish that you were just, okay, let's skip this. Yeah. I actually thought it, it made the story a little bit better yeah. for when she finds Jack, John, however you want to call him in this. And I thought that uh, I thought that really added to the story of Pearl. Ruby went on a limb there being cuckoo for the whole thing. But that is kind of what happens to her yeah. in the novel. And this is really from Pearl's point of view. So overall, I highly recommend the Landry series. I think there's a lot to enjoy about it. It might be something a lot of people, if you have a real attachment to the Landry series, it might take you a minute to let go of some of the things. But as far as adaptations go, thought they did a great job. Yeah. And thanks again, though, everybody, for joining us for another episode of 411 Pop Culture, where real people talk about really everything. Please comment below. What did you think about the Landry series? Is it one of your favorite now Lifetime adaptations, or do you still prefer Dollinganger, Adir, My Sweet Audrina, or the Castile series? Which one would you like them to make next? Dawn, Rain, no. Melody? Or uh, something else, because I know that there's a lot of other ones yeah. out there, too. And uh, please comment below. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. But, you know, they had made the agreement. They said we weren't going to do it. Oh, my God. Three, two, one. We just can't move around a lot, okay? But you have to laugh now, and now we're going to waste the time to do this. <laughs> so our camera's acting up, and we need to go as fast as we can now to film. So, of course, this one's now falling apart, <laughs> and we're not going to be able to film. Every so. time you say three, two, one, it, like, starts again. Okay. 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 All right. Three, two, one. So, you know, <laughs> Paul and Ruby made... Okay, I'm sorry. It's a coffee don't get mad at me. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm wasting camera time.
Well, just look, and there it goes. It's all broken now. Well, we would have been interrupted, We're Justin. Waste the time to do this. <laughs> John Amos.